has been awesome. We have gotten so much. And here is one of the headlines. Kiki Malloy rewriting the record books. Tinsley's first pitch up high, underway in the finale. Kiki Malloy, Kiki ever Malloy. since <laughs> she got to Knoxville, she has been a legend. And that legend has only grown these last few years that she's worn the Lady Vol uniform. We got this, kid. Here we go, babe. Tinsley in the dirt. Taylor Tinsley's been particularly incredible in this tournament. A record of two and one, ERA perfect, zero. Three appearances totaling 15 innings. She has not given up an earned run. Striking out 21 while walking four. Now appearance number four against Malloy and the Lady Vols. Top shelf to run it full. It's a second rise ball. First one, Malloy held it off, but the second one goes up and even tighter in on the hands, and she's not able to hand that pitch. That is a rise ball that we're going to see all throughout this game. The home run queen down on a K. Taylor Tinsley allowed strikeout number one. We just talked about the rise ball, but how about this curveball tight on that corner? That was an absolute monster of a statement for that first pitch. Calm, cool, and collected from Taylor Tinsley. She's got a lot of game left, but if you're UCLA, that's a great statement to begin this game. Riley West is the definition of bringing in a big stick. A three-run shot against the Rainbow Wahine of Hawaii. About an hour and a half ago, Maya Brady across the diamond, two up, two down. Pitch here, tight in on the hands again. That where Tinsley is going to live against these Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Floats that one right in there as well. And if you're a player on either side of these teams, you get excited for these matchups. You want these matchups. You're itching for these matchups. Gibson puts it in a good spot. It's just out of the reach of all chin. When you're coming off a career year, good things happen. McKenna Gibson, a two-out single. That was a great effort by Ultron. Look how deep she starts. Dead sprint all the way in. It looked like she, at the last minute, had to turn her glove so she traps that ball instead of being able to have that little basket catch. A great effort. The Oklahoma transfer, Sophia Nugent in now for Tennessee. The third OU transfer in a row for Coach Weekly. The pipeline from Norman to Knoxville remains strong. Pooney, Donahue, now Nugent. All three of them exceptional additions. Hold on the slow roll. We'll just toss to Brady, and that's how it goes. Gibson's the base runner. That's it. Here comes UCLA. That might seem routine, but the exit velocity off of her bat just makes it really difficult for defenses to be able to handle it. And of course, whenever she gets it in the air, she sends it far. Maya Brady watching ball one. Numbers for Brady, and even 500 in this tournament. Seven hits in her 14 at bats. She has gone yard twice. She has doubled. She has tripled. She has quite literally done it all. Tinsley, 
just using the movement, that late break that she has on her screwball to get that to bail away from the lefty Brady. Pickens, again, that screwing action, but it dovetails too far away. Another one of the true legends of the game. Coach I, Elinoe Perez, watching on as her team tries to take the opening lead. The third coach at UCLA. Eight championships across. That's a nice little off speed. This one has the same movement as her screwball. It starts on that inside half, moves away over the plate, but the speed difference is what definitely gets Brady out in front. Protection swing from Maya. Breath from Pickens, her ability to just be able to stride out, use her long limbs, those arms to be able to swing around. Malloy sees it the entire way, and the 6-1. By the time Harlan she Pickens. releases the ball, she's a lot closer to the plate than, say, a pitcher who's maybe only 5'7", 5'8". So by the time she lands, that arm is right there and then the snap right behind it. She's a lot closer and with the ability to gain momentum, gain speed with her levers, makes it a lot harder for hitters. Just misses outside to Alchin. It's fitting here. On Wrigley Field, which is brought to us by USA Softball. Aileen Alchin, the U.S. Junior National Team. And we have plenty of bona fide USA All-Stars in this game, including Kiki Malloy, who we've already seen hit. There will be, in all likelihood, some Olympic representation in this game. That's a big hack right there by Alchin. Great placement by Pickens, low and inside on Olchen. She starts closed off. You can see that front closed off. So that low and inside pitch is almost impossible for her to get to. Pickens can place that consistently. She's in a good spot. Did not go. Smokey Ed says that Olchen held up. Well placed in an even better grab. Welcome to Knoxville, Laura Miller. This is a great snag. Shows you some athleticism over there at shortstop. Just reaching up and getting it. Sacking that line drive out of the air. Because Olchin, she gets on. She has a lot of speed. She creates some chaos on the bases for UCLA. It's a nice job getting that one out of the air. Getting two outs. For Tennessee. It'll be up to Jordan Woolery in this first frame. She watches strike one. Laura Mueller coming from Murfreesboro to Knoxville. So keeping it in Tennessee. One of the bigger portal additions for the Lady Vols this past offseason, and there were a few. Pickens asks for time and gets it. Another big bat to keep an eye on here. Jordan Woolery has already gone yard in this tournament. Four RBI tied for second on this team. Watch Woolery's reaction. Wanted that one. That was her first strike and her second strikes. Hitting pretty on that low and away. And that exact same spot, Pickens hammers it home and picks up the strike out of the talented Woolery. We've got two good pitchers. They're showing it. In 
some creative outfits as well for the Lady Vol fans in attendance. There's an orange squid with big eyes roaming the stands here and rooting for Tennessee. Launched on the very first pitch. Destiny Rodriguez has the Lady Falls in front. Destiny Rodriguez. How's that for a welcome to UCLA? First pitch, an absolute bomb out in left field. This one elevated Tinsley, not able to get it in on the hands of Rodriguez. And she sends this one well over. That even hit a fan out there in left field. Got to keep your eyes peeled and your hands ready for those. You've been seeing a lot of balls head out that way. Zeta Puni very well able to do the same thing. The second home run of Destiny Rodriguez's career. And both of them have come against ranked competition. She went yard against a really good Baylor team and does it again here against UCLA. Here is Zeta Pooney. And she taken away. Meonio, the nice play in center. This one also over the plate. And Zeta Pooney, she drives this one. Mionio does a nice job getting underneath it. That was hit hard and then dying quickly. So noticing that, getting underneath that to be able to catch it before it falls off. Tennessee aggressive early in these at bats, Nicole, trying to quickly get to the sophomore Tinsley. And you see in this batter, last name Leach, she is not yeah. the first Leach to play in this program. She has a twin sister. They both came in together, but had an older sibling as well, Kelsey Leach, who transferred from Texas Tech. And then she went over and played for Tennessee her last couple years. And then right behind her, sitting right next to number 55, the twin sister is the fourth and final Leach, Aubrey Leach. She played at Tennessee as well. Taylor Tinsley not caring about the history right now. She goes up top and Leach down swinging, but definitely an incredible legacy at UT. Tinsley, that late break, it's whenever she's able to keep that rise ball on the corners. She sees a lot of her success with her, that pitch, but whenever she leaks it over the plate, over the heart, Tennessee, their bats are just too good. You can't be leaking pitches against a top team like this. Taylor Panel, outstanding in that game against the Knights of UCF, and she's had an RBI in pretty much every game here at the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. Right now, though, she's just trying to get on base and extend the rally that right now has started and ended with Rodriguez. Every year, fans walk away from this tournament saying, man, it felt like postseason. That was a postseason yeah. game we just watched. Teams walk away saying the same exact thing. And this matchup right here is something that you're going to see later on in regionals, super regionals, World Series. Can't tell you how many times whenever I played at this tournament, we faced off against UCLA. We would do it just again a couple months later at the World Series. That is what happens. The best of the best come here, and it is always such a fun time to get to see previews like this, postseason previews. High chop to Maya Brady, who closes the frame. But it's Tennessee on the board. Destiny Rodriguez opens the scoring. Game right here. Wins matter, of course, but growing the game to the next generation even bigger. And the three-time defending champions giving some autographs on their way out of Cathedral City.
Uh, a lot of young players, we've talked about it all weekend long. They wait, they sit, they watch, and they see these amazing athletes do incredible things. And they say, man, I, I want their autograph. I want to be just like them one day. I have an autographed ball from Kat Osherman that I got whenever I was 10. I had watched Team USA play, and I said, man, one day I want to play in the Olympics. And I kept that ball for as long as I can remember. And I, I got to see that dream realize. It is those athletes that get to inspire those dreams that inspire the next generation. Plenty of young girls in Southern California inspired by Megan Grant. She's hitting 636 in this tournament and has been massive for the Bruins this year. You can see even just by that foul ball, the aggression behind it. Look how quick her hands are through. She barely misses that one. That one being fouled straight back. Lot of power at the plate. Watches strike three. Pickens is locked in. A big strikeout for Pickens. She's picking up right where she left off last inning. This one off speed, and she is pumped on that outside corner. Charlize Palacios going after the first one she sees for strike one. A massive shot to the deepest part of the yard. Hit it high and watch it fly. A Charlie shot to tie it up. In a big stomp across that plate, Charlize Palacios lets this one elevated, get deep into the hands, and she sends it right back up the middle, well over the bleachers out in center field. And watch this stomp as she comes in. She is fired up. UCLA, they respond back to back. You hit a home run? All right, Tennessee, I see you. I'll raise you another. Charlize Palacios' first home run of the year. Evens us at one. Savannah Pola now trying to keep the good going. Good setup pitch by All Pickens. Around. Gets that first strike early. She wanted to get her with that screw. A little bit too low, but you could tell that Pola, she wanted to be baited into that one. It was hard for her to hold up that swing. Nearly the exact same location. Savannah learned her lesson last time. This one more elevated than the last. And how about Sophia Nugent? Blink and you'll miss it. Those frames back there. Mm. Carlin Pickens. Her name starts with K for a reason. She's got her third. This pitch dirty in its own right. That movement, it starts on the river on the inside half to a lefty. It ends on the outer half of that plate. That's a lot of break as a hitter. You got to be able to handle. That's really her first misfire of the day. That already marks 45 strikeouts on the year for Carlin Pickens. And we are still a ways away from conference play. Going back to that conversation about Sophia Nugent, 
Back in the first inning to end that one, I, I think that was actually a ball on that last strikeout, but the way Nugent brought that back in so quickly. Pickens. No chance. That just is in the dirt. Even with the good stretch by panel. It's a two-out base runner for UCLA. Decimal Lawalu on. This one popped up. It makes panel. Pickens have to come out and panel. She's able to come out and get safely down first. Gives UCLA a chance after all. Pickens to Pacini. Maddie goes after the first pitch. A reunion here. She used to be wearing the other jersey. 36 games played, seven games started as a freshman at Tennessee. Now facing the Lady Vols. That pitch a little low, but notice Pacini's feet. She's a little closed off with that front foot. She's trying to get that screwball and take it to that opposite side of the field. She's aiming for that right center area, letting it get deep and sending it back that way. And Pickens, she knows that. She's not trying to bring anything back into the wheelhouse of Pacini. She can see her feet set up. She's gonna stay away or she's gonna come in really, really tight. Pickens in the driver's seat. Not done just yet. Maddie transferring to UCLA for the academics. That is really the driving force of a lot of the portal additions for the Bruins. Coach I doesn't go to it too often though, much preferring that homegrown approach. You look at Maya Brady and that homegrown approach can certainly work well. Painting again. Softball.com, finding local events, USA Softball National Championships, and the latest on certified equipment. It's all just a click away. If you're a top 12U player, sign up and try out. The USA All-American Games. A look at Team USA's own. Hiki Malloy, Softball World Cup, playing for the red, white, and blue in Japan, playing for the red, white, and blue in Canada, and quite possibly an Olympian coming up right here on the West Coast. Ah, that 2028 Olympic dream is still alive and well for a lot of young girls, not only in college right now, but for that next generation. Or a Miller. And <laughs> we're definitely going to be, see be seeing some of these players. This one, Tinsley, that low rise. She has the ability to start that rise at the mid thigh, end it at the waist, or start it at the waist and end it up at the top of the strike zone. She can do it all. She is on fire right now. Miller attacked heavy. Mm, you can hear the snap. Taylor Tinsley. Firing on all cylinders. And here is Team USA's and also Lady Vol, Kiki Malloy. A woman of many titles. Home run record holder at Tennessee, Torchbearer Award winner, which is the biggest honor the university can bestow. And the host of Camp Kiki where she teaches youngsters how to do something like that. Kiki Malloy turning two and getting it. Such a good base runner in combination with the power. You're an athlete watching this. Kiki Malloy, she has a lot of speed, yes, but watch the way that she dives into second base. She's able to avoid this tag she knows that the second baseman is on the right side of the bag, and she automatically goes to dive in on the left side. 
fired up, trying to get something started for her team with this leadoff double. All of a sudden, it's an RBI chance for Riley West in Tennessee. to a hot start. Already picked up a player of the week honor a couple of weeks ago, courtesy of a four RBI effort against the Baylor Bears. We talk about those homegrown talents. West committed to UT her freshman year of high school. And now a senior and a big piece. Went down, golf that one. Will Malloy chance it? Of course she will. Throw home is in time. An absolute laser to erase one of the best base runners in college softball. And Jaden Alchin, if you're an outfielder, you're waiting for this ball in your head. You know it. if it comes to me, Kiki Malloy is going home. This throw better be on point. And look at that tag from Palacios. Might have been a little bit of blockage there at home plate. But that was a great throw nonetheless out there from Jaden Alchin out and left. Riley West will take Malloy's place at second with an extra out on the board and the hitter Gibson. Slow roll, Brady fights through traffic, makes the play. Tennessee is able to threaten, and they nearly had it, but all literally two pitches that have accounted for the entire scoring so far. A pair of solo shots. The only offense we have through two and a half. Pickens fires in strike one to Janelle Mayonio. Bats for Tennessee came alive just a little bit. They were shut down by that play at the plate, but two hard hits in a row. Lost some chaos for UCLA. But let's take a look. Corey, you and I were talking over the break. This play at the plate with the way that umpires have been calling obstruction calls. This is hard because that throw was delivered up and over that line, Palacio. She had nowhere else to go unless she, if she wanted to catch that ball. But as it stands, if you're a runner, I, I would be saying I had nowhere to slide. And so it's that kind right. of catch 22 where you're looking and you could see it from both ways. Obviously, it went in favor of UCLA and a lot of things had to go right for the ball to be hit to Olchen. A great throw, a great tag by Palacios. But that's where new rules, I think, especially early on in this season, it's not just players who have to get used to it. It's umpires as well. Just getting used to right. those calls, getting used to the changes. It's a new season. There are a lot of new things in effect this year. Mm -hmm. Pitch clock being Most another one. A clarification on obstruction where it talks about if you're blocking the leading edge, it's obstruction, but it's not obstruction if you wind up where the throw took you. That is exactly where it needed to be. Meonio with the ball still on the fence. Janelle Meonio hit by the softball. Number three stands at three. UCLA fired up. And this one, just a hard shot in between that infield. And right in that sweet spot, lefties, they typically have that ball drop in that fair, and then it rolls on foul. <laughs> but if you get it past an outfielder as a lefty, you can see West started chasing after that one. As a runner, whenever you see that, you go, okay, 
if it gets past her, even by two feet, I'm starting to look for third base. I'm starting to look to take that extra base. UCLA, great spot here with a runner on third and Maya Brady up. Janelle's opening triple of 2024. Not a lot Riley West could do. That thing just got caught in the corner. A perfect bit of placement for the senior Bruin. Pass the bat to another. Brady chops it up. There's no throw at the plate. Brady does the job double. She's safe. UCLA leads. In this one, we've seen it multiple times, that hard chop into the ground right in front of the plate. Whenever you're a defender and you're having to wait for that ball to get down into the ground, you have speed, there's no play for you anywhere. You can see Weekly just coming out, talking to not just her pitching staff, but her defense saying, we're fine, we're gonna respond back. For now, let's stay sharp defense do everything that we can let's look for maybe a double play but watch this one look how high it is by the time Mart Rodriguez is able to get that ball Mionio she's more than halfway to home plate it would have to be a perfect throw and even then it might not be in time going to first was the only decision she had but Brady ton of speed and screwball action right there going up against right now one of the defensive heroes of our game. Lynn Alchin, a great play from left. Nice off-speed screw ball. Pickens has started to weave that into her pitch calling a little bit more. Keep UCLA off balance. Alchin's a great example of players recruiting other players. She had a four-year career at Washington, playing over 160 games, goes into the portal, and Maya Brady reaches out, saying, hey, want to play in the same conference still? They were travel ball teammates before, and now collegiate teammates. Palacios and Meonio also on that same travel ball team. So continuity and chemistry for the Bruins of UCLA, and it shows. taken some lumps and they've embraced it but you know a Perez saying the learning has been off the charts in these first few weekends and they want to be playing their best come regionals after a disappointing end to last year and ultimately I think that's a coach's dream is whenever you have a group of young talent we talked about ucla they arm raise them from the very beginning a young talent who's hungry to learn hungry to know more and they get these hard hard trials early on in their season early on in their career those are things that you don't forget whether you're a freshman or a senior you remember those and to learn that as a freshman early on it's invaluable Pickens cannot get by Alchin. Really enjoyed our conversation with Coach Aya. We probably monopolized her time for 45 minutes, basically. But one of the things that was really interesting that she said, among many, was she would have loved last year's team to face this type of adversity. You never want to lose games, of course, but there's so much value in that early season learning. That one, good carry. In the left, into the basket of West. What a snag. West. 
making up for the one before this one. Look how shallow she is, shallow and close to that line. And she catches that one deep in left center. But not just that, that throw almost beats Maya Brady back to first base. The immediate reaction as soon as she caught it to take a step, gather her energy and momentum, and then just launch it over to first. Great heads up play as an outfielder. Maya literally looked back at Lisa Fernandez, was like, she caught that? And she certainly did. What a grab by West and both of our left fielders here in our grand finale, putting on a highlight reel performance. Jordan Woolery tried to go down and grab it, but it was not there. So Woolery, she's struggled just a tad with that backdoor screwball, that outside pitch. She wants to go get that pitch so bad, but as a righty, you need to let that screwball travel closer in on the hands. Otherwise, if you go after that outside one, you're going to roll over. That's the pitch she wants, but good job by her recognizing that pitch started on that inner half of the plate. By the time it gets to her, she knows with the movement of Pickens, it's going to be over. Jordan Woolery having success this year and building on it. She was great even the first time she came here to Mary Nutter. Went three for three with a home run and a double against Northwestern Wildcats last year. Apologies to our broadcast partner, Sid Supley, if she happens to be watching. It ended well for Northwestern. They won the Big Ten. This is a nice at bat by Woolery, taking it to full. She has been battling after a strikeout, her first appearance. She's been seeing a lot more pitches. Out in front, and look at the strength! Jordan Woolery, a moonshot. If you thought about counting out these UCLA Bruins, that home run should make you think again. This screwball, a little bit too much over the plate. We've seen that with Pickens just a few times. But Woolery, after seeing pitch after pitch after pitch, she makes the most of it. And again, a massive celebration as she comes in. Place her with another amazing pitcher in Gottschall who can do the same exact thing. She starts it out with strike one. That's what you want. She's so comfortable out of the pen. Had the UT save lead last year. Did start plenty, about 20. He is happy to roll in any way. Grant watching it. Gottschall comes in and fires three straight strikes. Talk about standing on business right there. That rise ball at the top of the zone, and Grant doesn't even realize it. That movement, so deceptive. Sets up one of our home run hitters today. They're going to have to have a little bit of change in their approach to their at-bats. Gottschall, she has predominantly rise balls that she likes to throw in there at a fantastic off-speed. So you're going to have to battle both of those pitches, two different zones. On a hop, Miller, another nice play over at short. But 
Dog Peace delivers these benefits and more. Check out the airwave. All of a sudden, if you're Taylor Tinsley, you're feeling real good about your opportunity in the circle right now. Largest lead of the day at three. The Bruins in control. Tennessee, though, last time they were up to bat, they had a couple of hard hits in a row. They were threatening. Looks like they might get a run across. For Tinsley, knowing that you have to stay tight on those corners. Whenever she leaked over, just even an inch, not by much, but just an inch. Those Tennessee players, those bats, they have so much power behind them. They were able to grab hold. Make some great hits happen. Egypt watches that one. It's funny. We were just talking about off-season strength and how it helped Woolery. A little bit different in the off-season for Sophia Nugent. Back when she was at OU, she played in a men's fast-pitch softball league in the summer. Routinely going against 70-plus, and she really feels it helped her power game, and the numbers, they bear that out. Went after that one high. Watch it fly. There is the power of Sophia Nugent. Sophia Nugent chases after this pitch that is elevated. She swings at that, and it is over her head. And you can see just how far she sent this one. If Corey, if you had told me that there would have been four home runs in this game yeah. before we're even in the fifth inning, I, I don't know if I would have believed you. Two fantastic pitchers. Rodriguez already has one. Tried to go for second. Janelle is there though for the out. Pretty wild. We've got some really good hitters, though. And even though it's a game of failure, every once in a while, somewhere between three and five times out of ten, the hitter's going to win it when they're that good. And we've seen it in bunches. Pooney, slow roll. Tinsley bouncing back, though. I had just talked about whenever Tinsley leaves that ball, even though it's elevated, she leaves it over the plate. That is when Tennessee has been able to get a hold of pitches. That last pitch to Pooney tight in on the hands. That was a good pitch. Alana Leach. After that, look at the resolve from the youngster. Give up your second home run of the day, doesn't matter. Sophomore looking like anything but. the middle it's a leech standing at first base for Tennessee that's pretty familiar she'll pass the baton to Taylor panel this pitch on the inner half but again not tight enough on those corners and leech she's able to drive this up the middle take it with her it's been a good inning for Tennessee two hard hits one of them caught one of them sent way over the fence They've been seeing Taylor Ow. Tinsley very well, but. I could do the exact same thing. Oh, 
Tinsley going up and in, tight, 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 in on the hands of Panel. Understandable for Taylor Panel to try and be aggressive. This is the continuation of her comeback tour, limited to two weeks last year because of injury. But a phenomenal player, top five on the Flow 100. We nailed that one. And she has been on an RBI roar here for the Lady Vols. Palacios going to go talk to her pitcher, Tinsley. I think in this moment, just kind of the way she approached her, I think she sees something, just giving her a little bit of a tip. Quick tip, quick mention. What pitch do you want? Let's go. Let's get in, get out. Get back into the offense, score some more runs for you. Making it happen as we get here at Mary Nutter. Not a bad spot to watch. And just a fantastic view from every angle. Here at Wrigley Field at the Field of Dreams Sports Complex. Six, seven, eight coming up here for the Brew Crew. Sabi watches strike one. Watching on, that's right up the middle. Malloy whips it in. Pola on the board with a base knock. Pola, nice job staying through this one. This is an off speed that's slightly elevated. That's why she's able to get a hold of this one. But the extension from Pola, that's what gets this ball up the middle, hit hard enough to get through that infield. And it feels like oh, UCLA has so. been a little bit relentless in those first few pitches against Tennessee. They definitely have an attack mentality. They're looking to hunt early in the count and make things happen. It's interesting there, seeing Nugent pop up. The base paths have been really quiet to this point in the game. And both teams, as we've seen in the outfield, can fly Guessing that's a nod of respect for two really good catchers, Nicole? Absolutely. And I think also, to that point, the base pass have been quiet, yes, but it, it's been in situations where it's the first time where it would make sense to steal a runner, to send the runner. In the other situations, it just didn't feel quite right. So a little bit of a nod, but a little bit of soft wide cue of maybe this isn't the right moment. We don't want to risk it. We have one out. We've been struggling to get that runner to second. Laulu lifts to left where West awaits. I guess the other end of that is about half our base runners have been trotting around the bases. No need to steal <laughs> after you hit a home run. Yeah. That's definitely a perk whenever you get to hit it over the fence. You don't have to work on that speed training quite as much. A couple of friends who are big time hitters still now professionally. And I asked them, man, what is it like to jog around the bases almost every time? <laughs> I say it's pretty nice. This one, nice pitch on that outside corner, very sharp. Goes right back to it right there. 
We've seen different speeds around the base paths, though. A couple of the youngsters, especially when it's their first home run, they sprint around even after the home run. They just want to get in to that huddle and celebrate with their teammates. Who's your preferred speed, Nicole? Fast, slow, somewhere in the middle after you just launched one over the fence? Oh, I don't launch him over the fence as often as Jocelyn Allo, but I have learned that whenever you do, enjoy it. Take that time, jog around. Ball with a nice grab. College softball, like the players you're watching right now. Go to usapreps.com and register for an event. First pitch of this fifth, Laura Miller. Straight back for a foul. It really has been a perfect tournament, Nicole. Appreciate Mother Nature cooperating with us here at the 20th Mary Nutter. Last year, she was a little cruel to us. We had to battle some elements. Not this time. It has been ideal. Ideal indeed. It's that time of year when everyone's finally sick of the cold weather. They're excited that things are starting to warm up. For me, that means, okay, softball season is about to take off. Just a roll of the eyes. All Mueller can do. Taylor Tinsley spotting. Charlize Palacios behind the plate. A little of extra work for her pitcher. Kiki Malloy. One for two, watching strike one. We have had the pleasure of watching Kiki Malloy grow up right in front of our eyes here on Flow Softball. I remember back in her freshman year, she was a youngster in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico in 2020. And I'm on the phone with Coach Weekly and I ask her, so you've got this impressive freshman. Her dad's lawyer Malloy, so she's obviously got athleticism. Do you think she'll play here? right out of the gate. And Coach Weekly says, well, she hit a home run off the scoreboard, off of a tee. So yeah, she's gonna play early. And she has been phenomenal since. Hitting a home run off of a tee is, is the ultimate status symbol in my head. Whenever I was a little kid, I was like, man, if one day I could hit a home run off of a tee, that's when I know I'm a really, really good hitter. And I feel like kid logic, adult logic, just straight up logic, that, that still rings true. Kiki Malloy, she has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think, yes, it's due in part to her power and her strength, but the softball IQ is just so high. Which tells you just how good Taylor Tinsley is right now. That off speed is starting to be peppered in more and more and more, especially after last inning. Tennessee, they got several hard hits in a row, including a home run to narrow the lead. Tinsley, she's been mixing it up. the thing with this game is the offense has come so suddenly right you want to go oh one of the pitchers is settling in the defense is locked in and then all of a sudden a ball is sent high into orbit and the game changes Taylor Tinsley, lucky number seven strikeouts on the day. UCLA on taking after that. And of course, the original Batman, Adam West, Dion Warwick, six Grammy Awards. There are legends all over the place here. Nothing to be done on that. It's a two for two day for Janelle Meonio. 
I mean, this one is just placed perfectly over the head of the pitcher, Gottschall. It lands right behind the pitcher's mount. That's an extremely difficult play for the second baseman to make just because of the angle. Textbook right there. If you are a slapper and you've been watching Mionyo hit tonight, the way that she has been going after it, this one, I mean, look at the angle. She would have to go all the way across her body while moving even farther away. That was beautiful. Maya Brady. One of the front runners for player of the year. Manages to catch the glove of Rodriguez and that's it. Back to back base knocks. Here come the Bruins. This one not doing too much. Doesn't get all of it, but just enough. See how far up the middle Rodriguez has to go just to be able to reach that ball, much less make a play on it. Kaylin Alchin looking to bunt, brings it back, strike one. Maya 0 for 2 before that swing. No stranger to struggles. She was an outstanding prospect, but she's cross-trained across the diamond, into shortstop, out of shortstop. Struggled a bit, but has overcome it and is now one of the best players in the sport. Bunt goes foul. Or did it? Saw a dead ball called, but nobody's moving back. I think that one might have looked like it was foul, but by the way it rolled, it actually ended up in front of home plate. And so that foul ball line, it landed on the fair side of that line. You just can't see it because of the batter's box, but that's where it was picked up. So it goes down a quick replay. as a successful sacrifice. And he's motioning with his hand. Yes, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Stretched his hands out at first, and then signals fair. And so successful sacrifice. And it sets up Jordan Woolery, who's already made a huge impact with two in prime position. The thing that I've seen most from UCLA is their ability to get runners on over and over and over and over again. They have done such a good job. They're not relying solely on the long ball. Yes, they have had two home runs already, but they've had runners on. They've made chaos. They've made noise on the base pass. And I've only felt that from Tennessee once. To that point, just one runner left on base for UCLA. One of the big reasons why, these bases have been cleaned up. Woolery was out in front, and it did not matter one bit. Her strength shows she rockets it. And UCLA has been rolling since. Now Woolery goes the other direction. Leach had room, throws home. And UCLA continues to get production from Woolery. Meonio comes across. As an outfielder, knowing how far you are from home and the speed of Meonio, if you're wanting to hold up, it's a hard one, but if you're wanting to hold up that lead and minimize it, keep them at four, I think that's something you're starting to get into later innings. Yes, maybe you want to catch it, but instead of going across, feel like you can take a couple more steps as you're going to catch it in towards the catcher instead of drifting over towards that foul line. 
I was thinking the same thing. Do you, do you drop it on purpose there and let it go foul? That one was close enough to the line, though, where you maybe don't want to risk it. There's so much that goes into that math in very real time, also while you're sprinting. And I think that goes hand in hand with, as an outfielder, knowing the situation before of what, if the ball comes to me and this happens and this happens and this happens, you know right. ahead of time. Nice pitch by Gottschall. Two back to back, really nice on that outside corner to Grant. Grant down hacking. Brady stranded at third, but still UCLA converts. A little small ball. Sack bunt, sack fly. Ruins by. Oh, sorry, Corey. Were you talking to me? I was still <laughs> <daydreaming>. <laughs> At Kettle Corn all weekend long. It's not fair. I want to be there. I can smell it. I can taste it. Just can't have it. Ripped to right. And right in front of the track is Grant. One pitch, one out as Taylor Tinsley continues to roll. Last time we saw her, she struck out the side in order for her seventh of the day. And now she gets a big hitter in Gibson to fly out. But here is another challenge. A solo shot in the fourth. Here's the Tennessee catcher. And both of these pitchers have been making use of that outside corner. They've been getting calls on the river all evening long. Fair or not as a hitter, you have to be able to adjust to it early on, maybe not swing. But as the count gets later, you have to foul those off, be able to battle. I think that's why Nugent, she was so excited to get that high pitch. She said, finally, something that's yeah. not in the river. Elevated, I can handle. Let's send this. What was even more impressive about it was, I think if there's one bit of coaching wisdom that would dominate all of softball. It's don't swing at the rise ball. She did, and she went yard with it. An unconventional player in Sophia Nugent. Tried again, too. That one had a lot on it, though. That one is even tighter in on the hands than that last one that she blasted. The one before was a little bit more over the plate. I think that's why she was able to catch that. But Tinsley, she's not going to give her anything close that's hittable in that up zone. She's going to be staying low. I think Nugent knows that. That one getting called. Great work behind the plate by Palacios. She is doing work. I can't even count on one hand how many pitches she has gotten for her pitcher. That one is a ball. And the way she brings it up, frames it, makes it a strike. Taylor Tinsley putting together a career outing right now against one of the nation's best teams. And she comes with another strike to Destiny Rodriguez. I think UCLA has embraced that role Coach, I said, we're a little bit of an underdog right now, and it's weird to think of UCLA as an underdog, but they are, especially in this game. And they took a beating, and they said, all right, we'll lick our wounds during the week. We'll get back to practice. We'll show them what an underdog looks like, what an underdog fight looks like. And they're okay with it. It's February. They don't want to be playing their best softball right now. They're wanting to save that for June. It's all about learning, growing in these moments. One of the few misses from Tinsley today. It was destiny for Tennessee. Destiny Rodriguez hit it to left. That opened us up. And we've seen plenty of offense since.
Brady will watch it go by. Do not see that often. Brady on that one, it almost looked like whenever she was going to field, body wasn't in front of it, took a weird hop. We know this field, yeah, her body's just not in front of it. Body a little stagnant. Instead of moving through that one, this field we know is hard. There's going to be bounces on it, weird bounces, skips. So as a defender, the most that you can do is be moving through that ball, being able to keep that body in front. In case your gloves miss it, you can chest something up and still have a play. Brings in Zeta Puni. This is who you want up right now if you're rooting for the Lady Balls, a warrior in every sense. Played last year with a torn shoulder. Didn't make one bit of difference. Wound up all World Series team for Tennessee. Now she's 100% and raring to go in 2024. She has a lot of power. Her first at bat had a hard line drive up the middle. Got the K. Last, last inning, but Tinsley, she's starting to see Tennessee coming back, being able to make a little bit more solid contact. She gets behind 2 0 here. See Palacios call time, just talking to her pitcher. Assessing where she's at, assessing what do you want to do with this pitcher? This is what I want to see. She's done a fantastic job behind the plate as well. Pooney lifts it to Pola. The huge bat avoided. Taylor Tinsley is having an unbelievable 24 crowns, the unquestioned national champions across nine age divisions. Got show. Coming home with one that is launched into right. It goes and goes and goes. The second home run for Charlize Palacios. It's the Palace of Charlize in Cathedral City. It is just her world and we are living in it. Hit one out and left. Now she's going oppo. And that one is well over. You can see all those girls well beyond those bleachers running to that one. She has been dominant at the plate, both at the batter's box and behind the plate framing for her pitcher. Charlize's first hit as a Bruin was a two-run home run. Now she'll go multi-home run day. Career-defining stuff against Tennessee. Bounce back. Winds up in the glove of Miller. <laughs> Tessa Malaulu watching one low. Premier Girls Fast Pitch is where the best of the best play in amateur fast pitch softball. Since 2009, thousands of female student athletes have realized their dreams. Play on the college level by performing with top level competition in front of college recruiters. Top level competition right here, no doubt. Malalu Washington won low. PGF produces hundreds of tournaments and showcases each year across the country, including the PGF High School All-American Game, unanimously considered the highest individual honor in youth fast pitch softball. Premier Girls Fast Pitch, the future of the game is here. Hashtag play PGF. Lu watching outside. Tessa's return from injury a year ago proving to really be a shot in the arm for this UCLA team. And she continues her comeback tour. Tessa stands at first base. UCLA is still churning. A flare will always work. <laughs> Every time you get it in no man's land, you're gonna get that flare, you're gonna get on base. It is basically softball law. 
there <laughs> it's a rule that one a little bit up in the zone from Gottschall nice job handling that pitch taking it to get that single it was a good adjustment by Gottschall on that last pitch too to be able to recognize okay that one that rise ball it was out of the zone not enough let me bring it up a little bit more get that swing and miss that one of the gasoisms Nicole a flare will always work I, I feel like every softball player says that. I don't know. Most of the softball players I know are OU softball players, but I mean, there's been a lot of pro players say it as well. So I feel like it's a common knowledge just as don't step on the chalk line. You know, just one right. of those things that you just know. May not feel good, but hey, you get on base. <laughs> Wanted that one. Gotcha has to await. This one a little low and off on the zone. But I think that tells you how great both of these catchers are behind the plate working to get those calls. A little in between her there, but. Like I said, working to get those calls, they have been getting it, and I think that's why Gotcha wanted that pitch. This one will fly between her. Gives Nugent a chance to hug her third baseman before she goes back. There you go. Whew. Gotcha, the right answer in the sixth. I mean, just listen to the sound of this bowling glove. Nothing else is, <laughs> nothing else is prettier than that right there. She was one Tennessee knew they wanted right away. She faced the Vols as a freshman at Bowling Green. And she goes in the portal. First visit was to Knoxville. Coach Weekly says, yes, we would love the Mac Pitcher of the Year to join our team. Thank you very much. Is number two in the nation in strikeouts. Just foul. Mionio, she has been one who has gotten some things going for this UCLA lineup. Hitting in that nine spot, but getting on base so consistently. Brady right after her. Had that nice line drive, got past the left fielder, ended up being a triple in that single last inning. Quite the day for the pair of former teammates at Arizona, now Bruins. Janelle Meonio and Charlize Palacios. Both making the trip a little further west together. Dynamic duo. Just enough to keep the inning going for the Bruins. And this is what you want if you're rooting for UCLA. Two on base for Maya Brady. This one hit hard into the 5-6 hole. You saw how close up Gibson was at third base. Didn't have a lot of moment to react. It was just ball goes right past her in that 5-6. And now Maya's got some count leverage as well. Ducks on the pond, don't leave them on. Old softball cheer rings true right here. Already top RBI mark coming in to this game for UCLA. On the season and in this tournament. He's got another one, had it on the fielder's choice in the third. But she's down one and two. Tennessee just trying to get to the seventh and keep this thing at four. Maya Brady, the chance for insurance. That one tight in on the hands of Brady. Knee height, 
the way she's able to get to that pitch, I don't even know how that speaks to the quickness of her hands. Down looking. Gotcha. Got her. The four letters leads by four, and we go to the seventh. Big time pitch, big time game. Let's do it. All within about a one minute walk of each other. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine for Tennessee. Taylor Tinsley fires in ball one. Leach back to even. Yesterday, Tinsley got 11 strikeouts against Baylor in a complete game effort. Today, she has eight strikeouts against the top five Tennessee team. This is a shout out to the softball world from the sophomore. She's definitely an arm that is going to be relied on heavily for UCLA. That's typically how they have their pitching staff. Like to have a predominant ace then a couple of backups and I think it's pretty clear as this weekend has shown Tinsley she is the one for the job her stuff is dirty came into this game with double the innings of Caitlin Terry who was number two in this tournament Jada Cecil throwing three and a third so that is pretty clearly the format for the Bruins and when they have the list of legendary pitchers that they've had including the one who will stand at first base when they're on offense, and Lisa Fernandez. No surprise, you get that dominant ace again. Leach trying to do all she can. Leach puts it in play and drops it down in front of Alchin. Leach into second. Karen Weekly and the Vols are happy to have another pair of Leeches in the family. Tennessee on the board in the seventh. That one low and out. You could see by her posture. She stays over, bent over. She doesn't try to come up too much. And then just legs out this double. It was a great play off the wall by Alchin, getting it in quickly. But the most impressive part about that swing was just the beat, the ability to hold that posture and have control over the body, get to extension, and then she went to go and run. Sometimes as a lefty, you, you want to turn, you want to run down to first mid-swing. So being able to stay in the box, get the swing finished with before you get that run. The extra millisecond really does do wonders. Bella Fall was playing shortstop here these last few innings. The freshman did a great job. But now as that spot comes up, Taylor Panel re-enters a 1-0 count. But you know, a Perez going to talk to the sophomore Tinsley. What an outing this has been for this battery. I think both of them have shined so strong in this game. Palacios just getting so many calls for her pitcher left and right. Pitchers that are clearly in the river. And then for Tinsley, being able to stay in this game, every time Tennessee adjusted and they got a couple hits, she adjusted immediately, right away. And she's the pitcher who is aware of what's going on. She's not throwing mindlessly. She's able to adjust, move her pitches up one inch, out one inch. That river area just off the strike zone by about a ball length. And it's where 
Tinsley has lived. Both of these teams still great competition coming up. UCLA is off to Judy Garman to take on the likes of Michigan, Florida, Weber, and DePaul. Tennessee gets back home for the Tennessee Classic in Knoxville. Starts on March 1st. But still a lot to be decided with Leach at second and no outs here in top seven. Chopped it up, and the throw delivered. Tinsley doing a little bit herself. She's done that all day. First pitch to Starvis, huge hack. Here, Tennessee, one swing right now won't tie up the game. Don't try to do too much. Easier said than done, but look for those lower pitches from Tinsley. Those are the ones that they have been able to square up. Being a hard out, getting lots of pitches, battling, battling, battling. But zoning those pitches down, zoning those pitches on the plate. Sarvis had a huge swing against UCF. Four RBI and one rip, her first career grand slam. The hometown kid grew up about 90 minutes away from Knoxville. Right now, just trying to extend this game for Tennessee. Not a like bad that idea. thought by Tinsley going on that outside half exactly. She went in hard, in hard, worked that lower half. Okay, let's treat her to an up pitch, but let's do it off the plate, see if she chases. We've seen two aggressive swings from her. That's absolute filth from Taylor Tinsley. She has 20 strikeouts in about 24 hours, and Tennessee is down to their final out. But it's Kiki Malloy. Kiki used to being in big time situations. She has battled, only had success once, two strikeouts against Tinsley. She has been on fire today. I'm looking at my stat sheet and just see K, K, K littered all throughout these innings an effective job working through the zone. Nine today for Taylor Tinsley, 11 against Baylor for an even 20. Over the course of her last couple of games. Balls down to their final strike. It's an even 30 on the tournament for Taylor Tinsley in the strikeout column. Pac-12 pitcher of the week inbound. Tinsley comes home, chopped up on the backhand. The throw is not in time. The speed of Kiki Malloy will keep Tennessee alive. This one, it's that drop. It has been getting both sides of this defense. Brady doing a good job being able to handle it. But see how this chop takes her up the middle. She has to take an extra second, make sure it's still in the glove. 
before getting it over to first. And Kiki Malloy, she has some wheels on her. Can see alive to see another batter. Half swing, enough of a swing for Riley West. West goes for that check swing. West chops it up. The backhand, the short throw. UCLA has upset Tennessee. And one of the most historic programs in college softball starting to learn what it takes. Here come the Bruins in 2024.